All right, everyone. Welcome to another catch up call with our friend in Gnome who has a wonderful YouTube channel. You'll see his link in our description for this video. All right, so Denome and I were talking and he mentions that one of the key metrics he uses is the 365 day and the three year dormant circulation metric on Bitcoin. And specifically what he looks for to signify a bull market would be a big spike in, in the yellow bar here, which is often synonymous with a bottom. And then when they both tend to diverge, like we saw here in mid-March or in mid-May, mid to late May, that's when we tend to see a top because the three-year dormant circulation is catching up with the one-year. Uh, Denome, could you maybe expand really quick and talk about some key moments that you used as some good alpha? Yeah, sure. So what this indicator shows you is basically really old money moving Bitcoin. So when you see dormant circulation 3G, which is the pink line, when that spikes, then whales who have held Bitcoin for more than three years are moving Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So that is usually when really smart money, old money is taking profits because they haven't moved Bitcoin for three years, they want to basically take profits most likely. And the yellow line, however, it shows a little bit younger money. So it's basically uh, money that has held a bit, uh, people who have held Bitcoin for more than one year. So it's a little bit younger money, uh, also whales, but it's just less holding. So when you see a spike of a pink, that usually means a top because that's when old money is basically taking profits out of the table. But when you take a look at those two charts there, when you see uh, like yellow line above the pink line, that is typically when you see a little bit younger money selling in advance. But like you see basically in 2019 to 2020, you can see the yellow line is spiking. You can see uh, a little bit younger money selling during that time, but the pink line is basically flat. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the time when really old money just don't want to sell Bitcoin at all. And that gives me a signal that they are bullish on a Bitcoin. They don't want to sell. So they are waiting for price appreciation, whereas the younger money, which is a little bit more hasty, they already want to sell. So what we currently see right at the end of the, the line there, we are seeing a divergence between the yellow line and the and the pink line right at uh, September 2024. Makes sense. Yeah, so they're both very far down here. But what you're essentially looking for, if I'm understanding correctly, is uh, bear markets or tops are often happening when you see the pink line overwhelmingly above yellow. And bull markets and bottoms are when you overwhelmingly see yellow above pink. Yeah, well... Optimally, I would like to see both at zero because that means mm -hmm. that young money and old money, nobody wants to sell. But Which that is, is not usually the case. At, right? Wouldn't you say that's somewhat what we're seeing at this time? Yeah, exactly. And usually when you see a uh, like a spike in price and you see that old money is not selling and even the one-year money is not selling, you're like, okay, people don't want to sell at these price points. The price is likely to continue to go up. But when you see a spike, in price and you see a lot of profit taking you're like okay this was the top yeah it totally makes sense and this is sort of related to what we were talking about before the call denome about retail traders really having a difficult time uh injecting more money into crypto unlike what we saw in 2021 and 2017 uh in various parts in between of course back then we saw plenty of times in which retail traders really were pouring in new money and right now we're really invest, uh, kind of relying on huge institutional traders and, and hedge funds to bring in more money through stable coins and through fiat uh, to pump the markets. And we've got MicroStrategy and BlackRock, but uh, it seems to be a weird economic time, not just in the US, but all over the world right now. Definitely. There's one caveat to that though, that uh, it just recently started happening, which was the uh, the rate cuts. Yep. So United States uh, cut the interest rates, which makes borrowing cheaper. And when borrowing becomes cheaper, that usually means more economic activity. And 
that's why you basically saw pumps after the rate cuts. But just within the last week, China actually, they also did rate cuts and they or, already sent stimulus checks, not checks, <laughs> stimulus checks yeah. to uh, uh, poor people and orphans. So that could be a, a, a driver. Hopefully we start seeing basically uh, money printers go back online. We're still not seeing a lot of money printers in the West, but we are starting to see money printers go online in the East. So even though we uh, are usually focusing on USA, that is not the only market in the world. So when we see China doing stimulus checks, maybe that money will come to crypto as well. So there's still hope that the market can sustain, but hopefully United States also basically pivots and doesn't let the market completely crash and we will see more money printing. But as of now, United States is not fully committed on money printing yet. They just cut the, cut the uh, interest rates only. Right. Yeah. And here in the US, we don't hear nearly as much about uh, Asian rate cuts the way everyone talks about them here. And of course, there's always going to be a little more social volume when it comes to US centric topics due to many of our social uh, networks that we cover being US centric. But I will say that this is a pretty heavy spike when it came to the China cuts that happened in the past day, day and a half. And I think that could end up being a very interesting marker for where markets end up going next. Because if you're indeed right, we might start to see a little bit of a, a trickled rise up, maybe not immediately, but we'll see. The last time we heard about China cuts, it was, I presume, mm -hmm. a rumor about it, and it ended up, ended up being a top. Um, but I don't think that that was really related to what this retrace was about. I think it was just kind of the natural cycle during the summer. Um, but I, I do think it's a good point, and I, I hadn't previously had that on my radar, the way China rate cuts can potentially stimulate what's arguably the second biggest nation when it comes to contributing to the crypto markets. Yeah, and I only heard about the stimulus checks also this morning. So I haven't verified it or anything. I just saw somebody make a video about the stimulus checks in uh, China. Mm -hmm. So that's why I brought it up here. So I don't know any details about it, but that's something I'm going to uh, look after this video as well. But that could be the uh, the catalyst that actually propels us forward. And then the United States will respond by doing their own stimulus checks. And hopefully we will see retail money come back to the market as well from that. But as of now, as of making this, it is still true that the retail investors don't have a lot of capital. Yeah, it, it does seem that way. And statistics are backing that up. And uh... You know, I also, when it comes to political topics, I, I always try to check in on the Harris versus Trump social mention frequency going on and how that might be affecting crypto. Uh, hmm. It's defaulting to Trump USD. There we go. So when typically you've probably seen the same, the crypto community seems to lean a bit more Trump, uh, regardless of what our own politics are. That's something that both Trump and Biden and uh, excuse me, Trump and Harris supporters seem to agree about is that crypto seems to have more of a bullish bias toward Trump right now. And uh, it's interesting going back to his assassination attempt that happened around here. Um, it ended up sparking quite a rally. Uh, but over here in late July, we had a one big Trump spike and then uh, Kamala Harris was introduced as the new Democratic candidate, and then prices fell off a cliff. I don't think it was related to the politics, but I will say, uh, as we get closer and closer to the election, which is about six weeks away now, there's going to be more and more chatter about these two candidates. And anytime they mention crypto, we can see an immediate impact on the not just the immediate result, but a potential domino effect that can last weeks. Yeah, yeah. This is something I, I constantly look at as well. And when uh, they had the debate together, I thought that Trump, Trump is going to win the debate and the markets will go bull bullish afterwards. But my analysis is that he actually lost the debate uh, in the eyes of undecided voters. 
So the people who already supported Trump continue to support Trump. The people yeah. who continue to support Kamala still support Kamala. But I think it's the undecided voters that uh, maybe Kamala was able to sway a little bit further in that direction. Yeah, it's so funny because the parties are so extreme uh, in terms of how how far apart they are, uh, and having kind of a visceral hate hatred toward one another, and that goes along with the Democratic voters and the Republican voters really having a strong dislike compared to previous years uh, toward one another. I think the undecided voters are a, a pretty silent minority these days. That. Yes, they do exist, but it's almost impossible to tell who's really winning these elect uh, debates um, because each news source that represents each party comes out with a declared victory right away, no matter how it went. And mm. the viral moments are usually uh, more mic drop moments than anything that, that really are um, s- impactful to you know, voter decisions and stuff like that. So it's interesting to see, but I I do think there was a slight consensus from the neutral media out there that, that Harris edged him out in the first debate. But of course we've got two more upcoming. So once we see that suddenly crypto's entire trajectory can change uh, because of the impact that the U S has. Definitely. Uh, it's it's an interesting thing, and, and I'm going to follow up. And usually, when you look at elections, typically going into the election or right after the election, we will have the pump. Maybe that just coincides with the Bitcoin halving ha- ha- happening in the uh, election years. But basically, the October is the best month in crypto, and right. November is the best month in crypto. And in election year, it didn't matter that Biden won in 2020, Bitcoin price still shot to the upside anyway so maybe this time it will be the same or maybe it's different i don't know it's hard to understand what is the politics of kamala whereas we know that trump will basically stimulate the markets and drive the energy prices down and uh, that is obviously bullish but with kamala it's a little bit more uncertain what Mm -hmm. she's going to do right after she gets elected yeah there's a lot up in the air for sure uh, before we depart, you know, what's one more metric that you're keeping an eye on, maybe for the short and for the long term? We talked about the the dormant circulation, but is there anything for like swing traders that you might recommend based on your exploration of the platform? Um, I I'd like to uh, keep an eye out on the um, on the amount of stable coins uh, that have been minted. The major ones like USDT, USDC. Sure. So the total market cap of those two stable coins. So you're just looking at total market cap. Let me see if I can add those really quick, just to take a quick peek at where we're at. So obviously, unlike most coins, the market cap of stable coins are not just going to fluctuate along with their price, which is something that's very useful about them. All right, so if we look at USDC, I'll even add uh, BUSD and DAI, because I think that's uh, a really interesting point. And there's one more stable coin that I have added also is FUSD. I think that's like $3 billion right now. What's the ticker? FUSD. Oh, F, got it. Uh, not sure why it's not showing. Uh, maybe it was not that. FD USD, first digit. Uh, yeah, I think it's that one. Got it. Okay, so what we're seeing right now is a continued climb with Tether, which is constantly minting more. I'll and, add. Yeah, go ahead. And by the way, I use the combined metrics, and I just plus all of these together to create one chart. Well, overall, I think this is a really awesome alternative way to understand what's going on, not so much in Bitcoin or Ethereum or the more common cryptocurrencies, but specifically looking at the market cap growth of stable coins, specifically with the mintings going on, uh, more coins coming in for available dry powder for traders to use. This can be a very handy tool 
to get an idea of how the bull and bear markets are fluctuating. So I highly, highly recommend people check this out and look into everything uh, on behalf of Gnome and uh, the rest of the team at Santiment. Thanks so much for watching and we will be following up soon with another great market recap and kind of deep dive on many of these metrics that many of you may or may not have already been familiar with. But thanks for watching and we will talk to you next time.